Hey, what's going on YouTube? Brian here with another quick video on DOS programming. So if you're wondering what DOS programming is, it's basically DOS is a was one of the subsystems or the main system for Microsoft when it first started. Um, so it was more like what people call the command line kind of thing. Um, but you could actually run programs from within that command line was, was what the this was. Um, so if we're looking at some like say older radios, uh, it still requires it. Maybe you want to repurpose one of those radios for ham radio or you have another purpose for it. A uh, way to mess with it is DOS Boxer, as you can see on my screen. It's a pretty awesome program. As we can see, it's an emulation program. If you uh, sit here and go through their, their stuff on here. Um, as far as the programming your radio through it, I, I honestly don't know. I haven't tried programming your radio through DOS Box. I typically set up a virtual machine that's dedicated and just install um install whatever rec recommendations it is typically i just install DOS on it and use the serial port and assign the serial port to that virtual machine if you have like a windows computer that's really easy to do if you use like hyper v i switched my uh, virtualization platform so i haven't been able to do that recently um if you get a chance you can watch the video on that and i'll drop a card in there on how to do that I can give you a good dem quick demonstration on how this kind of works. So if we come down here and look at the folder that I have created, on my C drive I have a folder called lab and I have this installation media here. Um, so this is for MCS R05. Okay, so if I want to run this program, if I try to install this EXE right now, my computer doesn't like it because I don't have DOS installed on this computer. This is a Windows 10 computer and DOS hasn't been installed on Windows for quite some time. So if we use DOS box, we can get access to see what this program looks like. So here's DOS box. So it doesn't look the most user friendly. Um, they do have some pretty good documentation on how to use it. Um, it's typically used for like gaming and uh, backwards compatibility of other programs. But I've had pretty good use with just playing around with it. So let's go ahead and try and mount this and see, because we may want to be able to have access to this folder here. So we're going to go ahead and do mount, and then you give it a drive letter. I'm going to give it C just to make it easy for me to remember. Then as we can see, it mounted the drive. In order to switch to it, we just C colon. And if you can see the prompt down here changed from Z to C, DIR, to see the directory. So we can see the same files that are listed below. But if we want to run that install program that we got an error from earlier, we can go ahead and click on that. Um, if you want to run how I typed that so fast, I typed an IN and tab, so it's the autocomplete. It makes it a little, your life a little easier, especially if you have a long file name. All right, so we're literally running an application within DOS. So we don't have mouse support on here. So that's why it looks and tells you to use your keyboard on how to do this. So let's go ahead and install it. So I'm just going to come through here and click Enter, like most Microsoft products. And as you can see down here in the background, it created a folder. And this right here is actually the program itself that it's saving and installing right now. It'll take some time because it's actually trying to be backwards compatible. So like if you have a nice gaming rig, like for example, the game, the rig that we're doing this video on, it definitely is more modern than say a computer of the time when this program was released. So that's why it takes a little longer to get it set up. I'm not gonna stop the video. I'll just sit here and be quiet and let it go ahead and do the installation. Shouldn't take that long though. All right, and so we can see it's done. I wanted you guys to see on how long it actually takes. That's the reason why, one reason why I didn't do that. And for those of you guys who know me, I don't like editing videos whenever possible because I want you guys to see the real world experience behind it. All right, so as we can see, it created the folder and we're here. So type MCS to continue. 
So if you look right here at the directory, it's C MCS MCS. So remember we said that the lab folder is the C drive. So that makes sense why it says that. What's interesting is if you look at the, where it says MCS, if we come in here and actually look at this, notice it's a bat file. So if you're working in IT or if you enjoy learning about different, that's a batch file. So it basically has a bunch of different commands in there. So let's go ahead and run it. MCS. All right, so we're actually loaded in to the program. Let me move my mouse out of the way. All right. Press F2 to set up the configuration. So this is where you're at typically when you first get into one of these older systems. It prompts you like this. Uh, your F keys are your friend on moving around. I'd say it's definitely important to read the help documentation if you're planning on programming one of these radios. Um, and then knowing how to set up the communication ports. That's definitely one of the other areas that you're going to you can struggle with. So like under F9 is part of the configuration on this one. So where it says PC configuration, that's probably the most important out of these two options we have here. Um, configuring the screen, not as important, but it still can be important. So F3. So right here, we have more information. So the system key, if we was using maybe a trunking system, we probably should have a system key listed here. Uh, one of the areas since that most of the stuff I do, it's it's mainly uh, conventional radio programming. So you'd have your rib, and if you're not familiar with this, basically you have a serial cable going to this box, and this box power going to your radio. And that's what is known as a rib. It, it like applies power and makes it so it has plenty of communicate power to send the traffic back and forth. Um, so it's saying which port is this plugged in on? This one would be on COM1, for example. So maybe your computer has multiple ones. For example, one of my computers in my lab, and if you haven't seen that video, I can put a link in there um, up here at the top somewhere. And uh, But basically, if you have multiple com communication ports, which one is it listening on? So this one's on communication port one. Um, but that would definitely be one area you would want to check. Okay. But like I said, you can get in and mess around and kind of see what, what all you can see on here. Um, get, save, programming, clone. So if you're you're making changes, uh, if you want to see the how the radio is currently set up, like I said, typically whenever I'm actually writing one of these older radios, I like to use a dedicated virtual machine, and I restrict it down to basically barely minimum to run. It seems to work well for me on that one. But I want to give you a quick introduction into DOSBox and Motorola DOS programming. If you like what you see, if you want mine click the like button. If you really like it, you might consider joining or subscribing. And if you want to, click the bell notification to get notified whenever I create new videos. All right. Thank you. Have a good one.